freezing temperatures, inadequate shelter and reports of food and water shortages. Well, that's the reality being faced by thousands of people stuck in a no-man's land along the Polish-Belarus border. The UN's refugee agency says the situation is catastrophic and will only get worse in the coming days. Poland says it stopped multiple attempts by groups of migrants trying to breach the frontier, where it now has at least 15,000 soldiers. Now, this crisis has been building along the border with Poland for several months, but the last few days have seen a deterioration not only in the political crisis that's building, but also in the humanitarian conditions. The situation is very catastrophic and in a day it will become worse, I think. So we need to do something. We have already started to provide the humanitarian aid through the Red Cross and will continue to do so for a few days. If somebody wants to get back home, representatives from the International Organization for Migration are here and they will help them get back. This is their right and their choice. And Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki says Poland is the target of a new kind of war where civilians are being used as ammunition. He's accused Belarus of state terrorism and Russia of sponsoring Minsk's anti-EU operation, something Moscow has denied. It's also dismissed claims that national airline Aeroflot has been transporting migrants and refugees to Belarus. The EU is preparing to level sanctions against Belarus on Monday. Now, the exiled opposition leader Svetlana Tikhanouskaya has accused Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko of bluffing over this threat he made to cut off gas supplies to Europe if his regime is slapped with further tariffs. We have increased the volumes of natural gas pumped via Belarus. The Yamal Europe pipeline is full. We are hitting Europe and they are threatening that they will close the border. And what if we block the supply of natural gas there? If EU countries impose additional sanctions on us, indigestible and unacceptable for us, we must respond. Now, our correspondent Shona Murray joins me now live from Brussels. Shona, even though the EU is unhappy with Belarus' actions, isn't Brussels concerned about the human suffering that's happening on its border and the reports of help uh, struggling to reach these people? Mm. Yeah, it's a very important question, Per, because obviously we know when you listen to the politicians, the language around this situation is around borders, hybrid warfare, uh, sovereignty, conflict, and, and very little, it appears, is around concentrating on the fate of these refugees, migrants, children stuck in deplorable conditions without access to sanitation, water in freezing conditions. Um, yesterday, there was a debate in the European Parliament with, the, with Joseph Borrell, the uh, EU's high foreign policy chief, um, where MEPs essentially called on the EU to, you know, live up to the principles that it purports to have when it comes to dignity and rights. But we haven't heard enough about that yet. And the NGOs, and we heard from the United Nations, complaining that, of course, Poland, for example, still doesn't let NGOs or um, people get in to look after these refugees. So that has to be uh, something and of, of a focus in the coming weeks, because we heard the situation is only going to deteriorate. And Shona, this has also taken on a military dimension now. We've heard from the defense ministers of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania warning that Belarus poses a threat to European security. What can the EU do now to defuse this situation? That's true. Yesterday, defence ministers, particularly from the likes of Estonia and Lithuania and so on, said the situation could potentially escalate into something of a, of a conflict. That is a real concern. But we know that the EU is steadfast in its position when it comes to expanding deeper and wider the sanctions against Belarus and possibly uh, the Russian air aviation industry um, because of its relationship with Belarus and bringing uh, migrants and refugees, innocent people from war-torn areas to this situation. Um, so the EU's position is really to lay on the sanctions be as offensive as possible in that regard against Belarus, but won't be brought to the table despite the fact, as you mentioned earlier, we heard Lukashenko threatening to cut off some of the gas supply to, to the EU from Russia that goes through Belarus. But I think the position from the EU is very much uh, sanctions-based. Per? 
Shona Murray live for us in uh, Brussels. And Andreas von Weissenberg, the head of Disaster Unit Europe at the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, is in charge of the efforts on the ground there on the border between Poland and Belarus. And he spoke to us about the challenges of operating on both sides of the border. This situation has been going on for almost six months and the Red Cross national societies in the countries in question have been working diligently on this context. In the last couple of days, of course, we've seen uh, this escalation at the border, which is extremely concerning. We, with the exception now of Belarus Red Cross that received uh, the possibility to go with the authorities into the border zones in the last couple of days, we don't have access to the border zones, neither does the media or any other humanitarian uh, organizations. And that um, is, of course, a grave concern. Um, we have, uh, as we can see clearly from the pictures, uh, dire situations. It was mentioned already, um, sub-zero temperatures during the night. It's not a situation that can go on uh, for, for many hours or days like it is. So something's got to give. And until that happens, we do have quite a lot of migrants, um, including women and children, suffering in this situation.